Houston, it's good to see you this morning. If you're here in house, would you rise to your feet as we open up in a word of prayer? If you're tuning in online, we want to welcome you this morning. Let's pray. God, we thank you, Lord God, that you've given us, Lord, the joy to wake up this morning, Lord, to come to your house, Father, to join in, Lord, with our church family, God, to just give you praise. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, that you are setting apart BBC Houston and us as a people, Lord God, for your glory. We thank you, Lord God, that we make a choice this morning to give you praise. Father, that we will not be quiet, God, but that we will lift up our voices to you and you alone. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you remain standing with us as we give a praise? I 
keep it inside I won't be quiet, my God is alive How could I keep it inside? Praise the Lord, oh my soul your breath in our love. 
one day in your court. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court and a thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your court. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court than a thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your court. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court than a thousand elsewhere. Better is one. Better is one day in your court. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court than a thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your court. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court than a thousand elsewhere. again to me I will draw near to you I will draw near to you Better is one day in your court Better is one day in your house Better is one day in your court Thousand elsewhere is one day in your court better is one day in your house better is one day in your court a thousand elsewhere better is one day in your court better is one day in your house better is one day in your court a thousand elsewhere one day in your court, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your court, thousand elsewhere. Father, that better is one day here in your house than anywhere else, God. God, we thank you this morning, Lord, that we get to have a heart of gratitude towards you, Father. God, that we're reminded this morning, Lord, that what you did on the cross was for each and every one of us. God, we don't ever want to forget, Lord God, that what you paid was for us, God, to live a life of victory, that death was paid for us, God. We bless your name as we seek this part out. Come on, church, lift your voice. Just 
could not hold. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the foes of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are
to sit and reflect this morning of who you are, that we say we love you, God. We thank you, Father. We worship you. For all this is in your name that we pray. This morning is the first Sunday of the month. We will take communion. When you enter the house today, you may have the elements with you. And if you don't have it, raise your hand and somebody will bring it to you so we can take communion together this morning. I want to share with you the scripture tell us the institution of the Lord's Supper. It in Mark chapter 14, verse 22 to 25. And as they were eating, the Lord took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them, and say, Take, this is my body. And he took the cup, when he have give thanks, he gave it to them, 
and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I do not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink is anew in the kingdom of God. This morning I want to invite you to focus on the last verse. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. I want to invite you to look at the kingdom of God. The blood of Jesus and His body have been given to us so we can be restored. So our lives can be awakened again to the pattern that God has designed. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Word of God said that the Trinity, the, the God's head, talking to one another. Let us make men in our image and in our likeness. And let them have dominion over this earth and every creature, everything on this earth that God designed for us to control and have dominion over this planet earth. And He has created us with a pattern, a desire that we are created exactly like God in His image, in His likeness. And He crowned us with glory. And He allowed us and gave us the dominion to rule and reign in this planet earth. And that's our responsibility. But sin have caused humanity lost its place. The Word of God say, For all have sinned and for short the glory of God. But praise God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son, have come to restore us. And when He shed His blood, is to purchase, to pay, and to restore everything that we should have. But because of sin, curse have come into humanity through the sin of first Adam. Thanks God. Through the second Adam, or the last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, He come. And He take all of the sin and the penalty of sin on His body and pay for it in full in order to restore for us that which is lost. And so today, as we take communion, I encourage you to have faith and, and, and receive it more than just something to remember the Lord Jesus Christ but to receive everything that He has restored for us. And my prayer is when you take the bread, you drink the cup, God will wake up everything that He has desired and created you for. He has a pattern for each and every one of us, for our life. He has fashioned us, He has given us a purpose. But sin have distorted, and this world system has distorted everything. But praise God, through the power of the cross, through redemption, we are redeemed to the intended purpose that God has intended for our life. So receive the bread and the cup today with a heart of thanksgiving but not stop there, but receive everything that Jesus has restored for you. I pray that your mind will be renewed this morning. 
even your body be renewed this morning. He has paid for everything that you can have divine health. And that's all we are. And by faith, we can grab and receive it and say, Lord, activate it in my life so I can live with divine health. Grab and take the, the vision and the purpose that God has for each and every one of us and receive this restoration, this renew, this revive so you can come alive again spiritually and physically. Father, we thank you for your blueprint, your original design when you created us. You created us just like you just a little bit lower than you. And then you crown us with your glory and give us authority, dominion over everything that you have created. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the work of the cross. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us your body, your blood. To restore that which is lost when Adam sinned. Thank you. But I pray that you will empower, you put power in these elements. The bread and the cup. Lord, when we take it, the explosion of life, it will happen in our life, in our body. And Lord, that your plan and your purpose begin to unzip and open up for our life and allow us to see and to live the kind of life that you have intended us for li to live. We thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Breathe into us again. Wake up every cell in our body and pour out your presence. May the seven spirit of God come and reveal yourself in our life. We thank you, Lord. Would you stand with me as we receive the bread and the cup? The word said, and as they were eating, he took bread. And after blessing, it, broke it and gave it to them. And said, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. We just take the bread. Thank you, Lord. In the same way, to the cup, give thanks and said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you take the cup now?
Now, Lord, we receive everything. That's the redeemed blood of Jesus. Have redeemed us for. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, may Your kingdom begin to manifest in our life. In your church, and then they expand to our community, our city. And Lord, set it up so we can have dominion over this city. That you have allowed us to live in and give us this territory to live, to work, and to expand your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Help us always look forward to the day that we will drink the fruit of the vine with you in your kingdom in the wedding. That you long to take us home to be with you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless you. Walk in divine purpose in your life. Please be seated. Amen. As we approach closer uh, to Thanksgiving, we are often reminded during this season, during this month, just how thankful we should be to God for every single thing that He has done for us. He's certainly worthy of our praise, worthy of our worship. And so at this time, we want to just continue to stay in that heart of worship to God as we worship God through our giving and giving thanks to him, worshiping him for who he is. As we participate in communion, we're reminded about the greatest gift of all, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. And that gift of salvation made possible by Jesus Christ was first only made available. I'm sorry, God in the Old Testament, his people were the Israelites, the Jews. But after Christ came into the situation and changed it all, now the good news, the gospel is available to every single person, Jews, Gentiles, young people, older people, and praise God for that. You know, a couple weeks ago, we had a certain person who attended our 11 a.m. service, and she brought her mom to the service, and she had been praying for her mom for years to come to know Christ. And so after the 11 a.m. service during ministry time, Pastor Sam was able to minister to her mom. And praise God, she gave her life to the Lord. I was able to catch up with her after uh, service, and she just had tears just strolling down her eyes. And these were tears of joy. And she shared with me that she had been waiting and praying for this moment for years. And that left such an impression on my heart because, A, God hears our prayers, so continue to pray for those that you are wanting and wanting to see come to know the Lord, whether it be your family members, friends, co-workers, loved ones, neighbors. And secondly, it says in 1 Timothy 2 that God desires for everyone to be saved. And so when people give their lives to the Lord, heaven rejoices, God rejoices. And so that's something to always praise God for is that life-changing moment when someone gives their life to the Lord. And as you continue to sow into this ministry, that is the heart of this ministry, to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone that we encounter, everyone that God has put in our path and the platform that God has given us to be able to share the vision that God has given us, to share with those to love God, love people, discover purpose, and change the world. And what a great time that we can 
worship God this way. And if you'd like to give this morning and sow into this ministry and be a part of what God is doing here, you can continue to put your tithing and offering in the envelope located in the seat in front of you. Hold on to that. And at the end of service, you can drop it off in the blue buckets behind you. Additionally, if you want to give online, you can continue to do so by going to vbchouston.com. And in the upper right-hand corner of that homepage is a link that's highlighted in red. You can give through PayPal online. And lastly, if you'd like to sell your tithing and offering to us, you can continue to do so by sending it to give at vbchouston.com. And we look forward into the coming weeks, months, where we will just see lives transformed. Our prayer is always for people to fill the seat here in the sanctuary and have more people watch us, watching us online because we take this ministry seriously and we give it to the Lord and we just rejoice when God and the Holy Spirit just does wonders. And we look forward in the coming days where more people will give their lives to the Lord, more people will encounter his healing touch, more people will be delivered, more people will be able to have those chains broken and lives restored. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And so let's bow our heads at this time as we give this time to the Lord. God, we thank you, God, for what you're doing here at VBC Houston, God. Lord, the last 50 days, God, you've been moving. Holy Spirit, you've been moving. And we just want to be obedient to the direction, God, that you are leading us. And so, God, we bring to you, God, the tithe and offering. And, God, we say, Holy Spirit, have your way with it. We pray, God, that you will bless it. We pray, God, that you will give us wisdom on how to use it, God, to build your kingdom, to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone that we encounter, God. We rejoice and just praise you, God, for all the lives that have been changed, God. We thank you, God. We know, God, that it, it all belongs to you our finances, and we just pray, God, that you would use it, God, to just, to be able, God, to be a blessing to so many. We thank you, God. We love you. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We have a few announcements to go over this morning. If you are here for the first time, we would like to welcome all of our guests in the house right now. We praise God that you are able to join us. It is certainly a blessing to have you join us as we worship God this morning. And if you are here for the first time, we want to invite you to the information table, which will be located in the foyer. We personally just want to say hi and welcome, to, welcome you to our church and our service. And so please see us in the foyer after our service. And additionally, for everyone here, we would like to connect with you in the foyer after our service this morning for a time of fellowship and refreshments with over coffee, kolaches, donuts, and some uh, light bites. If you are here with children from the ages of nursery age to the sixth grade, our children's ministry, VBC Kids, is taking place on the other side right now. And so if you have your child with you right now, please feel free to walk them over to the CLC, which is the building behind us. There, as you walk into the CLC, there'll be a dream team member to check your child in and your child will join the other kids this morning as they will worship God, um, have an interactive Bible lesson, participate in crafts, recreational activities, and just be able to just fellowship and just have fun with the other kids as we just uh, pray for them to just really encounter God each and every time uh, in children's ministry. Put it on your calendar two Sundays from now. On Sunday, November the 19th, we will have our Thanksgiving service here at at VBC Houston, and so this will be a great opportunity to gather together to give thanks to God for all that he has done this year, and this will be a great opportunity to invite your friends, co-workers, neighbors, loved ones to join us on that Sunday. We will have a special Thanksgiving meal after our service, so please put that on your calendar Sunday, November 19th, and on this day, we will have child dedication as well. And so if you would like to dedicate your child unto the Lord and pray for them that God will raise them up to be used by him to be a blessing to thousands upon thousands, we just ask that you will send and email us their first name and last name to this email address, vbc at vbchouston.com. And once you do that, our team here will reach out to you and give you more information about the child dedication. Now, please continue to join us this week, Monday through Friday, at 7.30 p.m. 
we will continue to have a time of worship and prayer uh, on these week day evenings. And so we are just continuing to press in into God, seeking more of his presence and just being able to just lay ourselves before God and just allow the Holy Spirit to have his way with our personal lives, our church, this ministry. And so please join us for that. It's been a very powerful time as you can, um, as you have heard. And if, if you've been here, you've seen that God has moved in such a great way. So we invite you to join us for that. Our last announcement is that our pastors I uh, want to invite all of you here who are in the house today to join us for a special meeting today after our 11 a.m. service. You know, God has been speaking to our pastors very clearly, and uh, our pastors want to just share with everyone here about just what God has been doing this last 50 days as far as revival and also on where to lead our church as we close out this year. It's a very important meeting. We're excited about what God is doing, and we just want to be, at the end of the day, obedient to where the Holy Spirit is leading us. So join us after our 11 a.m. service for this special meeting. If you are not able to attend, that's okay. Please be on the lookout for our social media updates and a newsletter because we want to keep everyone in the loop of what great things God are, is doing here as we close out this year and look forward to what God will do next year. So greater, greater. We're believing that the Holy Spirit will just continue to do greater things in our lives and in this ministry. Amen. So with that, let us give a warm, warm welcome to Pastor Sam as he shares the word this morning. Amen. Good morning. I probably just woke up my son. Good morning, everyone. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a really amazing thing that the Lord is going to do uh, as far as why we want to meet later on today. And I, I do invite you. It's not, a, it's not a time of like a true meeting or anything like that. But it's something that, you know, Pastor Khan and I, my father and I, we want to be able to share with you guys where we feel the Lord is leading us and, and how clear it's been for him to tell us the direction that we feel that he wants us to go. It's important for us to be able to move together cohesively as a family in what he's doing. And something that I personally feel that's important for us to do is to have the same vision, have the same heart, to understand what it is that we're supposed to be doing as a unit, as a family, because there's no point in us growing together if we all are going our separate ways. There's no point of us trying to move a ship together if many of y'all are on life rafts going your own directions. And if we're trying to bring people here, if we're trying to bring people, you know, to church or to build the kingdom, we need to do it together. And I need you guys to understand something is this, is the things that we want to talk about later today, personally for me, I really think it's important because it's going to impact all of our lives. It's going to impact all of our lives here in the church. It's going to impact all of our lives here, you know, going forward. And so I really believe that if you can, you know, go and have lunch after this and, and, and then come back. Uh, we don't plan on having you guys for a long time whenever we meet, but it's something that, you know, both him and I have been talking about and we've had lunches and we've talked and we think that this is the right uh, thing for us to talk about with you all. And so with that being said, for today's message, I feel like it's really going to impact your life in a way that for many of you guys, you've either been asking questions or wondering if you can hear from God. And for many of us, you know, hearing from God, it's either two things. One, you think you can hear from God, or two, you don't think you can hear from God. You're either in one or the other, you know, boats, and that's where most of us sit. Can you hear from God? Can you not hear from God? And where do you feel that you are right now? That's the biggest question to ask this morning. The only reason why I say that's the biggest question is because then the following answer or the following statement would be, if you're not hearing from God, who is leading your life? That's it. See, there's something that I've learned in the last 50 plus days leading the church. The most important thing in our lives is not only that we are children of God, but it's that we're listening to our Father. 
And think about it in this perspective. If you're a child in your house and you have parents or you have guardians or you have leadership, what good is it for you to be a child in the house but not listen to your parents? What good would that be? Who would lead you? Who would help you figure out your way in life? For many of us, we resent our parents because they weren't there and they weren't telling us things. And for many of us, we have issues with maybe our father figures, that our father figures weren't a part of our lives and that they didn't teach us or raise us. For many of us, we have issues with maybe our mother figures in our lives, that they weren't there to show the love that we needed or they didn't protect us. It's important for you to understand the roles of parents in our lives so that you can also understand the role of our Heavenly Father in our life. When you can truly understand that the Bible clearly says, honor your mother and father so that you may live long in the land that the Lord has given you, why is that so important? Why did God put that in the Bible? Why is it there? First and foremost, I'll give you the easiest reason that I can believe is this, is your parents growing up will be your first leaders in your house, in your life. And when you can see that understanding leadership in your life and understanding how to receive true leadership in your life from your parents, understanding the leadership from the Lord and the Holy Spirit is easy after that. But when you live a life that is resentful of your parents or when you live a life that's totally opposite of having leadership in your life, trying to follow the Lord or trying to follow the Holy Spirit is going to be totally opposite of what you know. It's going to be difficult. I believe, I believe, honestly, that if you were to ask yourself that question that I asked in the beginning is this, is where are you in the two categories? One, can you hear from God? Or two, do you still not believe that you can hear from God? And like I said, the following statement after that would be, then who's leading your life? Because if I was to be honest with you and if I could say it with all of my heart is this is, then what's the point? What is the point? What's the point of us having a a heavenly father who is like a shepherd? What's the point of us having a heavenly father that leads and guides us and that doesn't lead us astray and leads us to, to, to green pastures, leads us by the water? Like what's the point of all that in the Bible? Why? I want to ask you these questions because I want to challenge you this morning because this, every single message so far, every single time that we've spoken here at the church or every time we gather together at the church, it has to be something that challenges you. Why? Because when you leave church, when you leave this building, who leads you after that? Ask yourself the honest question, do you have quiet time? Some of you will say yes. I have quiet time, Pastor Sam. I read my Bible. That's great. But I didn't ask you if you read your Bible. I asked, do you have quiet time? And what quiet time means to me is, do you silence everything else that's noisy in your life to hear specifically from one person? That's quiet time. For many of us, the challenge is not if we hear from God. The challenge is, do we set ourselves up to hear from God? See, we we have quiet time. We set it up. We sit down in our favorite little corner in the room. We open up our Bible and we're highlighting things and we're taking notes down and all these kind of things, which is great. It's amazing. But something the Lord's been really, really just hammering in with me is this, is what is the difference between religious leaders in the Bible who knew the word or knew scripture or knew the prophecies or knew all these things but then could not even know who Jesus was before their face? What's the difference? My mind has been blown. My, 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 my life has been changed that I can't see the Bible the same anymore and I can't think about the Lord the same anymore without him having full leadership in my life. It's not the same. My life will never be the same when I asked a pastor and other fellow people in the church two weeks ago and I said, why is it that the Bible is filled with talking about the Holy Spirit but yet people still deny the Holy Spirit? Why is that? 
And you ask yourself this question, then why is it that many believers can believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins, but deny the Holy Spirit, deny the gift afterwards? Why? Anyone? Why? And when I looked into it a little bit more, and when I saw a little bit more, you know what it really came down to? It truthfully came down to those who understood what Jesus was talking about in the Bible, those that truly had a relationship with him. Those that could read the word, because we don't have that relationship with Jesus the same as the disciples did face to face, but those that can read the word and understand, because we don't have that face to face relationship with Jesus, that's why the Holy Spirit's here. Now we do have that kind of relationship. For many of us, it's not if we hear him or if we don't hear him. It's do we set up our life to be able to hear him. Quiet time. See, it changed my mind and the way that I saw things when I started looking at social media recently. There's so much, so much. I'm not even talking about political stuff. There's so much hate against the movement of the Holy Spirit right now. It's crazy. Get on social media, get on IG, and if you watch any videos that churches put out on social media of anyone getting touched by the Holy Spirit, anyone getting healed, go to the comment section and see where people say, this is false, this is witchcraft, this is not a part of the Bible, and all these kind of things. You just read all of it. And everybody will be quick to quote scripture. They'll just send something out. They'll just write out some kind of scripture, right? There's even pages of people who have made pages on IG just to post about people who move in the Holy Spirit, and then, be, and then they make jokes about it. Man, what's the difference between them and Saul before he became Paul? You're just crucifying the modern-day Christian on social media. That's what sucks. To the point where our world has gotten to the place where the Holy Spirit was a gift for us to be able to have true guidance in life to now where we're so consumed with ourselves, we don't need guidance anymore. And now it's a joke. Now the Holy Spirit, he's a joke. If that doesn't bring conviction to you, if that doesn't bring almost like a, a passion inside of you to say, man, that's messed up, you have to truly ask yourself the question then, if it didn't impact your life with the words that I just said, does the Holy Spirit really matter to you then? Does he have a spot in your life that, that, that's that important that when somebody talks about him that way or when someone de tries to debunk who he is, does that make you upset? See, for me, something that changed in my life was the day that in, in, it was a little over 60 days ago, a little over, a little over two months or more of two months. And I, I truly heard from the Holy Spirit, are you going to do something about it? That's it. The are you going to do something about it was this, was I remember the service that my dad was up here and celebrating the 40 years that our church celebrated. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, right after my dad said, and now it's time for even greater, the Holy Spirit put it in my heart, are you going to do something about it though? Or are you just gonna sit back and be a part of it? Or are you gonna do something about it? Are you gonna help? And that impacted my life in such a way that I never thought would change my life the way that it is now. Something that really has just completely just, you can ask my wife, like, every day I'm battling, every day I'm fighting, every day I'm growing, every day I'm learning, and I love it. It means so much to me. Last night, I was, last night I was in my office, and I was just reading my Bible, And just in, the last, just in the last two months, my entire Bible is messed up. 
All the pages are so wrinkly from all the tears that I've been crying while reading the word. Pencil marks everywhere and just I write random things in my Bible, like I'll make a star next to it, and I'll highlight it, and I'll, and I'll write the date that it mattered to me, or I'll, 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 I'll highlight it at the bottom, and I'll say, preach about this one day, or I'll highlight it at the bottom and say, see, Holy Spirit is real, or I'll, I'll just mark it, I'll mark it, I'll mark it. Because the thing is, I'm reading the same Bible that everybody else has the opportunity to read or says that they read. And if the Lord's revealing these things to me, I know he can reveal it to you too. Or I know he's revealed it to many of you before. But how come it feels like I'm on one page and a lot of people are totally on a different page where they don't even believe in the Holy Spirit? I challenge you. Ask yourself that question so that we can get started. And that question is this is, can you hear from God? Or do you think you can't hear from God? And then follow that up with, all right, then, who's leading my life? Because that's the biggest challenge that you'll see come the New Testament. When it truly mean, what it truly means to live a life for Christ and not for ourself. That's impacted my life, my family, my wife, my son. It's impacted our life so much. I was talking with, with Lewis yesterday, and I went to a wedding, and it was one of my best friend's wedding. I saw Lewis, and I was like, man, you need to just move to Houston, bro. I see you like every other month. And then he was like, Sam, come play flag football. I was like, bro, I'm like 31 now, and I had a baby, so that add plus five to that. Like, I can't do that anymore. Like, life's different for me. If I went out there and tried to play football, I'll probably pull, like, every muscle I, I probably have. Like, it's not possible anymore. And I just laugh because Lewis walks off, and I sit at the table. And I'm like, dude, I feel like I've just gotten older in the last, like, two months. Mature, he says. I love that. Thanks, Dad. My wife, you ask my wife, I used to be so happy. Like, man, I just got this new, like, electronic you know what I'm happy about? Honey, I just got this sports jacket that was $300 for $89 at Macy's. And she was like, okay. And I'm like, babe, this is awesome. I can wear it to church. And she was like, all right. And things are just changing only for me because in my life, there's a different perspective that I, I currently have. And I'm not saying anything against football or nothing like that. But what I'm saying is for me personally, there's been a new change in my life, and I hope that everybody can see it because it's, it's real. It's not something that I'm making up, and it's a sacrifice. And, you know, on stage, many of you guys can see me on stage, and all you see, and, and I heard this from a, from, from, from a speaker that I listened to, is that all you see is the clothes. All you see is this. But what you don't see is the countless hours of crying at home. What you don't see is the countless hours of me pacing back and forth in my house, contending for the church, praying, asking the Lord, lead me, guide me. And what many of us think is what we look like on the outside is the most important thing for us. So in order to do that, then we have to really focus on me, me, me. But it's what's on the inside that changes. See, for me, what I've learned is when I allow the Lord to use my life, and when I totally have said, Lord, it's all about you, it's not about me, my perspective in life has changed, and I've taken care of other people before myself in a way that the Lord is like, I'm, I'm honored by that, I'm blessed by that, and I never thought that it would truly be this, but it's like to give things away, to, to be used by God is more rewarding than anything else in life. And that's where I hope for many of us to be. And for today's message, when you ask yourself those questions, I want to show you something in the Bible. I want to reveal something to you so that you can understand what I'm talking about. And it just so happens that I'm talking about Samuel. And when we look at the life of Samuel, we can see something that many of us may be going through. And I hope that today's message is compelling to you to where you would ask yourself, wait a second, why have I not been hearing from the Lord or why have I still been living a life that I'm leading myself? 
when we look at the when we look at scripture, take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 3, and I'll just read from verse 1 to 13 for now. And it says, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. Samuel did not, did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time, and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed, and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I'm going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. I've warned him that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God, and he hasn't disciplined them. So I have vowed that the sins of Eli and his sons will never be forgiven by sacrifices or offerings. All right. My first point is this, and it's a question I already asked y'all. Are you hearing from God? Period. Period. That's it. Are you hearing from God? Actually, not period. Question mark. Thanks a lot, Taylor. I knew you were going to say something. Are you hearing from God? How do you know if you're hearing from God? Look at the life of Samuel. How did he know? He didn't. He did not know. So right now in your life, if you, if you don't know if you're hearing from God, here are some of the reasons. Check this out. In, in the very beginning, it says, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare, and visions were quite uncommon. See, that was back then, though. So what we have to learn from this is back then, hearing from the Lord wasn't common, but it is now. So back then, Samuel didn't know for a couple of reasons. And so before we get even deeper into it, the question is, many of us wonder, can I hear from God? What does he sound like? Something else that I want to show you is this, is you can serve the Lord and yet still not know his voice. How do you know that that's true? Well, look at the life of Samuel. It says that he was serving the Lord by assisting Eli. The Bible clearly states that at that time, it was rare to hear from the voice of God. The reason why I had to show you this is because it said, in that time, back then. So let me clear things up. It's not that you can't hear from God, and it's not that God doesn't want to talk to you. That's, not, that's far from the truth. That back then, it was uncommon at the time, but now it's different. Now, if you can understand what the Lord is doing for us, there is a change that has happened, that there is a relationship that God wants to have for us and, and with us, and it was actually given to us because of the crucifixion of his son, Jesus. And now we can have this relationship and this conversation. But look at the life of Samuel. The Lord calls out to him, Samuel, he gets up and he runs to Eli. Did you call me? His, Eli says, no, go back to bed. Second time, Samuel. He gets back up. Eli, you're playing a joke on me. I know you called my name. Go to bed. I didn't call you. The third time, it happens again. And then Eli realizes, wait a second. It's the Lord and he just must not know it yet. How many times in your life has God called out to you, yet you just didn't know it was God because you didn't know his voice yet? You ask any mom in this room, ask Lynn Tran, 
She can scream at her boys. She can call their names, and they'll know exactly that it's their mom. Ask any parent in this room. That's just how it is. But how well do you know the voice of God? Have you even, told, have you even taken time to, to, to sit down to try to hear from God? Or every time you sit down to have time with God, what you do is you just fill it up with things that's good for God, serving God, just like what Samuel did in the Bible. He was, he was serving the Lord by assisting Eli, but he didn't take time to really hear from the Lord. Can I just share something with you? Just because you serve at church every single day or just because you serve at church every Sunday, that doesn't mean that you have a personal relationship with God that many of us can do things out of the goodness of our heart or out of the works of our our lives or out of just doing it because our friends are there. But I'll tell you something. The moment you start to do things for the Lord because you heard from the Lord and you're serving because you care for the Lord and what he's told you and the mission he's given you, you serve differently. You will. I preach differently now. I teach differently now. Why? Because God has shown me the heart for people who are lost And guess what? I'm not talking about people outside of the church. I'm talking about people who are lost in the church. It's different. Pastor Khan, God's given him a true global ministry. For me, I really feel like mine's local. God's used me in this stage right now, and I don't want to cut that off though. In this stage right now, I feel like the Lord's using me locally. And that can change in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, but currently right now, The Lord's using me to prepare people in a way that I never thought he would do. The preparation that the Lord has for me to to help people, to help understand is this, is nobody should ever believe that they don't have the opportunity to hear from God and only pastors do. You can hear from God. You can have a conversation with God. He wants to talk to you. He wants to listen to you. We look and we find it in the Bible. We can see that even the disciples get the opportunity to hear from the Lord. But many of us just don't know how yet. My second question is this. is After you ask yourself, are you hearing from God? The second part would be, why would God want to talk to you? Now that question can go two ways. Why would God want to talk to you? Or, seriously, why would God want to talk to you? (laughs) Ask yourself, which way is it? Is it a question or is it almost like a statement at your life? And when I wrote this down, I was convicted in both ways because, one, as a question, why would God want to talk to you, brings me to a place of, do I know Do I have the hard facts? Do I know scripture on why the Lord wants to speak with me? The second way, almost as a statement towards my life, would be, am I somebody that the Lord would want to talk to? Does my life show the Lord that I actually need his direction? And that impacted my heart so much. That's probably the the meat and potatoes of this entire message is that question alone is why would God want to talk to you? When we look at the life of Samuel, the Lord strategically is trying to talk to Samuel. Why? Because the Lord has a message for Eli. But he says it through Samuel. He's trying to prepare Samuel. He's calling out to Samuel, 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 Samuel. Samuel doesn't know. He doesn't know that it's the Lord. Why would God want to talk to you? Verse 7, Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. Let me ask you these things. Is hearing from the Lord important in your life? Don't answer that question based off of you being in the message right now. Answer that question based off of your current lifestyle. Is hearing from the Lord important to you? You, want, you know how to answer this question? Does, does God only matter to you come Sunday? Because if hearing from the Lord is important for you, then you would do everything in your 
body, your abilities to hear from the Lord every day. This is another way. Does your life decisions depend on God's guidance or are you still making decisions for yourself? Many of you can say, Pastor Sam, I don't need God's answer to say yes to a job that I'm about to get. You know that, that, that video or that meme? Are you sure about that? Are you really sure that you don't need God's guidance for that? Are you really sure that you don't need to hear from the Lord to say yes to a job? Because trust me, I've heard many times where people have said yes to jobs and it was the worst job they've ever, they've ever accepted. I've heard from many people where they jumped the gun and said, yeah, I'll move. And it was the worst decision that they've ever made. I've heard people say, I don't need to make a decision. I don't need God's decision to date somebody. Sure about that? I don't need God's decision to lead my marriage. Sure about that? See, when you can get to a place where God's guidance and God's leadership is the most important thing before you make a decision, I bet you you'll hear from God. Guess what? I'm not going to talk to you unless you come to me and say, what's up? And I'll say, hey, how's it going? What's going on in your life? Unless I have a reason during the week, it's not like I'll make a phone call to you. Unless there's a reason. And guess what? There was a reason that God needed to talk to Samuel in that moment. He had a message for Eli. But in your life, from God. Or are you making decisions on your own? You know that lost feeling that many of us have? That feeling of, I don't know what's next. I don't know what job to choose. I don't know what path to go down. I don't know if I should propose yet. I don't know if I should get married yet. I don't know if I should start this business. I don't know what school I'm supposed to go to. I don't know if I'm supposed to buy this house. I don't know if I'm supposed to do this. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that. How do you end up finding the answer to that? Guess what? Many of us just say, okay, I'll do it. But what if I told you that you can have a conversation with the Lord and that he could actually give you the answer? But here's the problem. Many of us might not like his answers, so then we begin to just do things on our own again. Guess what happens to Samuel? Samuel finally hears from the Lord, and the Lord tells Samuel, I need you to deliver a message to Eli, and this is the message. His family they about to get hit with my wrath. What if God gave you that kind of response? Are you going to do anything about it? And it's not always like that. What if God's response to you was no? And you're like, I didn't hear from God today. <laughs> nope, that wasn't him. Nope, nope, that wasn't him. Y'all remember I told y'all my story about even my forerunner. As simple as it was, this car isn't for you. I didn't hear you, Lord. I just, yes, I will like to test drive that car. This car isn't for you. Yes, I would love to test drive. I'm going to buy it right now. I drove the car, wasted six hours because at the very end, the car really wasn't for me, and they didn't take my money because I heard clearly from the Lord, I have better from you. I have better for you. I was so upset, so sad. I thought that car was for me. It really wasn't for me. Not even a couple weeks or a couple, I forgot. A couple weeks or a couple days later, an upgrade. This car is for you. And then I got to minister to the person selling me the car. Maybe it wasn't even the decision of the car alone. Maybe God could have said, yeah, you can have that car. But guess what? I have a better plan for you. The person that's going to sell you the new car that I want you to get, you're going to share the gospel with him. Guess what happened? I was able to share the gospel with that person that sold me the car. They were a believer, but they were iffy about church. Are you going to do something about it, though? If God tells you something, ask yourself, does my life show God that I need to hear from him? Does it? For many of you, you're like, Pastor Sam, it's not that deep. I just wake up, 
I go to school and I go home and I eat, sleep, and I do the same thing again. Guess what? Your life isn't that deep because you're not hearing from God. And you're just doing the same thing every day because that's all you know how to do. That's all you know how to lead yourself to do. It's not that deep. It really isn't. But there's depth when you can hear from the Lord. Why? Because it's almost like your eyes are open. Your, your, your heart is open to the world in a different way now. Ever think about that? Ever wonder why people truly go through depression and anxiety? Ever wonder that? Ever wonder why people have social anxiety? Guess what? I'm the opposite of all of those things. And guess what? I can see it in everyone's life that has it. And all of the people that have it and those that are close to me, y'all hate me for it because I always push y'all out of y'all's comfort zone. They hate it. But I love doing it. You know why? Because the thing is, the fear that many of you have is the fear that you've put in your own life that people are judging you or don't want to talk to you or you just don't know what to say to them. That social anxiety, it's like awkward. I, like, I, I tell all my students, there's a cheat for it. Have the same three questions ready to ask the same people or different people the same three questions. You just need to get the ball rolling. And for many people, they're like, I don't even know what to say. I taught... My nephew, he, he's not in the room right now. I taught Austin. He started school recently at a, at, a, at a big school. He's not at a little school anymore. And um, I told him, I said, Austin, he was nervous. He said, I don't know how to make friends, you say I'm like, I don't know what to say. I said, Austin, I'll give you three questions. Just ask them these questions. Ask them what their name is. And then ask them, hey, did you watch? And then ask any movie that you and I watch together in the summertime. Ask them that. And then after that, ask them if they play any sports and then talk about the sports that you play and see what happens. And he's like, okay. And you can see his confidence building up, okay. And then all of a sudden, I don't even know this kid anymore. He's too cool for me now. He goes to school, he's got his pandas on or he's got his Jordans on, he's got his tall socks on, he's like walking around, he comes home. And he, one time I went to my, my parents' house, right? And he had this confidence because he, he he heard the advice I gave him, and he took the advice. And he was in the kitchen with me, and we're just talking. And he, this is what he said. You know, you know, Sam, You know? I'm like, you know what? I was like, where'd that come from? And he just laughs. He's like, you know? I was like, Austin. And then another thing. He comes up to me. He goes, hey, Sam, uh, tomorrow is my last baseball game. I'm going to try to hit a home run. Y'all know the last season he had, I bet him $100 that he couldn't hit a home run. But I did that just to push him out of his comfort zone to know, just try harder. I know you can do it. I know he's an athlete. I know he can do it. This was like two days ago. I said, Austin, this is your last game of the season. Hit a home run. I'll give you $100. He goes, I'm going to try. I get a phone call from my sister. And my sister calls me and goes, hey, you better be ready. I said, ready for what? Church is about to start. Yes, I'm ready. She goes, no, you better be ready. Austin's coming for you. I said, oh, no. She goes, not only did he hit a home run, Sam, no, he hit a grand slam. And you know what that means, right? I said, no. He goes, remember what you told him last season? A home run's $100, but a grand slam's $200. I said, no. He, in the video, he hits, he hits the ball, gets to the fence, Everybody runs. They win 19 to 18, one point. He's hauling, running around the bases, and everybody else is running too. He gets to the very end to step on home plate, and he just looks and he cheers like, I just made $200. He looks at me on Friday. Liam and Christian are with him. I get off the stage. I walk down. He goes, <laughs> guess what? There's a different type of confidence that you can then live life knowing that you've heard from your father. There's a different confidence when your father says to you, your heavenly father says to you, I know you can do it. And if you do it, guess what? There's a reward for you. No, the reward's not money, but the reward for you is the honoring that you do in my heart. I'm going to bless you in ways that you've never expected. 
I have yet to understand why it just feels so good to do things for the Lord. It's, there's a wholeness that I can't explain to you until you do it yourself. And when you hear from the Lord and you do it, you're just like, oh my gosh, I just won a million dollars. But guess what? Every time I do it for the Lord, I lose money. I don't win money. But I just feel amazing. Because I'm like, Lord, thank you for using my life to bless somebody. And Lord, thank you for speaking to me so clearly. Why would God want to talk to you? To, to be honest, ask yourself, if God talked to you, would you do anything about it? Just be real. Those that weren't here on Friday, right before I left church, I sat in my office, and I went up there to grab something, and I looked down and I saw a guitar case with my expensive guitar, my Taylor. I don't bring my Taylor guitar to church because I'm afraid that people would one day just go up to the stage and grab the guitar and just want to play. But the thing is, that guitar costs a lot of money. And at the time, I think when I bought it, it was probably like a little over 2K or something like that. And my fear is like, yes, people might drop it or the strap might come off and it might fall to the ground or they're wearing a belt or, and they're just going to scratch up the guitar without knowing, right? Accidents happen. But I was like, you know what? so that accidents don't happen, I just won't bring the guitar. And I only play the guitar in my office here and there because I cherished it so much. I wanted this guitar since I was like 13 years old. For many of you that don't know, when it comes to acoustic guitars, there's two brands you really want, Taylor or Martin. And it was a Taylor, and I was like, whew, I made it. And I bought it like a couple years ago. It's like you made it in life because it's like, you hit a higher, like, finally out of the high school bracket of income to where you're like, I can afford that. I'll still eat ramen, but I can afford that. So I, bought, I have the guitar in my office, and the Lord puts it in my heart, the Holy Spirit. You want to get closer to me, right? I said, yeah. That's all I care about right now. He said, okay, good. Give away the tailor. I said, what? <laughs> Clear as day. Give away your tailor. No. I love this guitar. You love me or you love this guitar? I love you, Lord. I'll give it away. I said, to who? He said, you know who. You've been talking about this person. You've been praying for this person all week. And here's the message you got to deliver to that person when you give them a guitar. I have not forgotten about you. That's from, that's from me, from the Lord. That's clear as day on Friday if y'all were here. It was Vinang that I gave the guitar to. He told me at the end, Pastor Sam, I was shaking on stage. Everything that the Lord told you was so spot on. And he said, never in my days would I have thought that I would own this guitar, but now I do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If he spoke to you, would you do anything about it? Many of us, we're afraid to hear from God. It's not that we don't hear from God. We're afraid to hear from God. Because the life we're living right now, the moment the Lord speaks, you'd be sad. Because he would tell you exactly the things that you're doing that you shouldn't be doing. Many of us hear from God, but we choose not to hear from him. Like, yeah, I heard you. I ain't doing it, though. Right? The last one is this. is All right, Pastor Sam. I want to hear from God now. I hear you. I know I can. So what do I do? Third one is make time in your life for him to speak. Verse 9, so he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went to ba back to bed. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. The title for my message today is Speak, Your Servant is Listening. I feel like that's something that we should really say to the Lord. Lord, speak, your servant is listening, and I'll do it. Set aside time from the, for the Lord, and don't try to fit him into your busy schedule. Make your schedule fit around him. Many of us say we don't have time for God. We don't have time to hear from God. Well, guess what? That's because everything else is set before your time with God. Oh, Pastor Sam, you tell me then, how do you make time to hear from God? How, I talk to him every moment I can. How do you do that? 
do you know when I talk to God, it doesn't mean that I have to sit down with a cup of coffee with my Bible open, with my favorite playlist going on, and the lights dim. That's not what I mean. That's what the Lord has, that's what the world has created your quiet time with the Lord that's supposed to look like. That's not what I do. You know what I do? I walk around. I'm, as I'm driving in my car, as I'm walking in, in the mall, or as I'm taking care of Visa, and I'm just like, Holy Spirit, what am I supposed to be doing? How do I lead your church? And I'm just doing things. I'm washing the dishes or whatever it is at home, taking care of, you know, my son and the dog or, or whatever it is I'm doing. If I'm building something, putting it together, I'm just speaking to the Lord. You know, some other ways of how you can make time to hear from the Lord, choose to worship in your downtime. Do you know what many of us do in our downtime? The opposite of showing the Lord that we want to hear from him. Choose to read your word in your free time, not when you're going through a crisis. Read your word, read his word, read the Bible, not when you're at a point of 911, but read it beforehand so you don't have to call 911. So that when you go through something, you can just say to the Lord, I know, I, you already revealed this to me, I got it, I know. Instead of struggling. You know what the struggle is? When you feel like you need to read your word and what you do is, and you read it thinking that the Lord's going to speak to a random scripture that you just pointed to. How about hearing from the Lord and he tells you, read the scripture and you open up, you're like, oh my goodness, that was spot on, Lord. How about that? How about this? Choose to talk to God about your issues instead of gossip. Oh, you're going through a hard time? Girls, y'all better come over. Why don't you talk to the Lord? Guess what gossiping harbors? Distance from the Lord. Oh, you had issues with your wife? You had issues with your husband? Hey, I got to get out. I just got to get out. Call up the boys. Where y'all going? Hey, we got to get out. Man, my wife doesn't get me. Every time she, tra- I, she tells me to take out the trash, I tell her five minutes, she just takes out the trash herself. Then we get in an argument and just leave. Why are the married people smiling right now? Oh, I just got to get out. Okay, how about instead of doing that, talk to God at first. The next one is going to hit home for a lot of you guys. Choose to go to church over, over other desires that would lead you away from God. A lot of people have said this to me, and I'll give you my flat-out answer. Pastor, in my life, I'm, I'm going through it right now. I said, all right, what are you going through? They list out things. I said, get to church. They're like, what? See, my thing is people have a hard time doing life Monday to Saturday because then they're like, I made it to Sunday. Guess what? For 50-something days, we've been at church Monday to Friday. We take a break on Saturday. We're here on Sunday. You tell me. You tell me if you're making time to hear from the Lord. You tell me. I'm not saying you have to be here every day. But I'm here every day, and I'm hearing from the Lord. Guess what? I'm having a hard time, too, but I'm hearing from the Lord. And it's the true guidance that I need. The last part of it is let God know you want to hear from him. Speak. Your servant is listening. All right? Last point. Sorry, I'm keeping you guys a little bit later. If God spoke to you, would you do what he asked? We see at the very end, verse 15 down to 21, we didn't read it yet. It said, Samuel stayed in bed until morning, then got up and opened the doors of the tabernacle as usual. He was afraid to tell Eli what the Lord had said to him, but Eli called out to him, Samuel, my son, here I am, Samuel replied. What did the Lord say to you? Tell me everything, and may God strike you and even kill you if you hide anything from me. He says that to Samuel, and Samuel's like, bro, God's going to strike you and kill you. And so he shares with him. So Samuel told Eli everything. He didn't hold back anything. Eli's response, it is the Lord's will, Eli replied. Let him do what he thinks best. See, we think fear. Fear is what stops us from doing what God tells us to do. Fear. Verse 19, I read this last night, just bawled my eyes out because then, of course, 
It is my name. But I read it like it impacted my heart personally. In verse 19, as Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him. And everything Samuel said proved to be reliable because he heard from the Lord. Verse 21, or verse 21, the Lord continued to appear at Shiloh and gave messages to Samuel there at the tabernacle. It also says that he was confirmed to be a prophet for the Lord. Guess what? All Samuel did, he went from not knowing God's voice to saying, speak, your servant's listening. And then he did exactly what the Lord said. And guess what? Elevation in his life. Guess what? He saw life in color. Pastor Sam, you just read from the Old Testament, though. We're in the New Testament. Come on, Pastor Sam. All right? Guess what? New Testament makes it even clearer, even clearer for you. And for many of you who are in a place where you're like, God doesn't speak. I've tried to hear from him. He doesn't speak. Well, guess what? Jesus clearly tells us in the Bible how we're going to be able to speak or how we're going to be able to live a life that's guided by the Lord. John 16, verses 5 to 15. Write this down. Read it yourself. Highlight this in your Bible. Never forget this. And let this be the new path that you live in life. But now I am going away to the one who sent me. This is Jesus talking. And not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. 12, there is so much more I want to tell you but can't bear it now. 13, when the spirit of truth comes. Highlight this, he will guide you into all truth He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. So if you're not hearing from the Holy Spirit, then you're not hearing from what is being received from Jesus. So you tell me, is the Holy Spirit important? Is having a relationship with the Holy Spirit important? Clear as day, written out for you, spoken from the Old Testament, spoken from the New Testament, full circle. Now the life we get to live with the Holy Spirit shows you clear as day where our journey in life is supposed to start and supposed to pick up. But what are you going to do about it? If the Lord starts to speak to you and your life has changed because it takes sacrifice, guess what it said? Scripture said that righteousness is now going to come, or guess what? This is how I read it. This is how I I see it. Now you have to strive for righteousness every day. You have to strive for holiness every day. That has to be something of you and something a part of you. Why? Because we host the Holy Spirit. And can we grieve the Holy Spirit? We sure can. And if we grieve the Holy Spirit, how are you getting direction for life? It's only through the Holy Spirit. And for many of you, you're asking the question, Pastor Sam, how do I hear from the Holy Spirit? Guess what? I talked about it on Friday. Pastor Khan's talked about it. We talked about it uh, two Sundays ago. We've been talking about it every single day, Monday to Friday, including Sunday. And as honest as I can say it is, everything after this is excuses. It's just an excuse after this. And the music stops. It's just excuses after that. It would would be me telling you, go through this door. But then you're like, nah, I'll go through this door. (laughs) Walk path A, not 
path B. Now just take path B. As clear as day. It's written as clear as day. I didn't write that. You want to be a church that sees revival? We want to be a church that sees revival? We want to be a church that sees a change? How are you going to do it if you've never experienced revival in your life? Guess what I've said to him and he said to me? We both don't know what revival is like. So we can only go by what the Lord tells us. You think for the last 50 something days it hasn't been a challenge for me? It has. Why has it been a challenge? Because I don't know what revival is. I don't know what revival looks like. There's no scriptures truly in the Bible that says, okay, meet at church for X amount of days, sing this many songs, read this many scriptures, and heaven's gates will open and revival will be there. If it was that easy, we'd be done. But guess what the Bible truly says? It says live a life of holiness. It says seek after his face. It says live in the new covenant, not the old. It says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It says that the Lord is looking for worshipers who will worship in spirit and in truth. It says those that, that understand who the Lord is, you're no longer a slave to sin, but a slave to righteousness. You don't have to be captivated by the life of sin anymore. You don't have to be captivated by the temptations of this world anymore. Only if you live by your flesh, you will. But if you live by the spirit, you won't. You're sitting in this room right now, and the very end of the message is the point that hits you the most. You know why? Because it's the conviction part. It's the part that says, I'm living in sin. I don't know how to get out of sin. But guess what? It's a choice. You can choose live in sin all your life or you can choose to accept that the Lord has forgiven you of sin and now the only thing that wants sin is your flesh and when you allow your flesh to lead your life your flesh gets what your flesh wants but when you allow the spirit to lead your life the spirit gets what the spirit wants do you hear from God Does God want to talk to you? If God talks to you, would you do it? I texted my siblings. I said, I'm sorry. And the code word is spill over. And they know service is going to spill over. Yes, I know. 1050. But guess what? 20 minutes more on the clock or a moment you can spend with the Lord and change your life forever. You tell me. Time doesn't even really matter to me anymore. You know what truly matters to me? It's not about keeping you long in church, and I, and I hope people can understand this clarification. It's not about keeping you long at church. It's not about speaking a long message, but it's this. If the message that I'm speaking is not empowered and filled by the Holy Spirit, I would want myself off the pulpit too. I would say, time's up, man. But if it's a message that I know that can bring people closer to God, and it's a pouring out from the Holy Spirit that will bring you closer, that will change your life on a Monday, Sunday, Tuesday, whatever day, for the rest of your life, it's worth it. But if anything else outside of this is worth more than you getting your life connected and hearing from the Lord, then I'll tell you this, you hear from the Lord, but you deny the Lord. I've had to really take myself to another level of understanding God's word and understanding how I should preach his word. And guess what I've found? Over and over and over again, I've told myself, if I preach a message like this, it would be too convicting. People would get so mad and blah, blah, blah. But then I read the New Testament and I see how Paul teaches and I see how it's written and I see how the disciples are speaking. And it's not conviction, but it's, it's, it's boldness and it's, Filled by the Holy Spirit. I try to read how Peter did what he did and then how people were saved and how 3,000 and, and more people were healed and more people were delivered. What's the formula? The Holy Spirit. Giving space for the Holy Spirit to move. Guess what? Not a single person in this room, even Pastor Khan, 
can say, even myself, we can't say we know everything about God. We can't say we know how the Holy Spirit moves. We can't. We don't know. But you know what we can say? We know how to follow him. We know how to follow him. I, I, I'm, I'm, ooh, like if I could flip this pulpit, I'd flip this pulpit. It, it's so important that you understand. It's, it's so important. If you could only understand, like, oh man, like, woo, if you could only understand how important and how much change could happen in your life, if you'd allow the Lord to make the decisions for you. If you could only understand. If you could only understand. If you feel impacted in a way that you're saying, man, I need to hear from the Lord, and man, I need to make a change, come to the front. That's on you. It's a decision you'll make. I'm not forcing you to come up here, but it's your choice. If you need a change in your life, if you need to clearly hear from the Lord. Eli didn't do anything for Samuel except say to him, when the Lord calls you again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. That's it. That's all. That was the first group of people. The second group of people is this, is yeah, you hear from the Lord, but you've denied the Lord multiple times. And you feel like he's not using you in the same way anymore. And you need a time of repentance to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I repent of those times of the opportunities you've asked me, but continue to use me. I'm stepping up now. I'm changing it up now. That's for you. Come to the altar. It's on you. You know, something that I've learned is this, is in the moment of your life right now, wherever you're at, you ask yourself this question. If I do hear from God, if I don't hear from God, which one of those impact my life more? If I do hear from God, does that impact my life? If I don't hear from God, does that impact my life? And the reason why I ask those questions in those two ways, and yes, they're two totally opposite ones, is because you clearly know the choice that you're making in your life right now. If I don't hear from God, guess what's impacted? Your entire spiritual life. If I do hear from God, guess what's impacted? The life that you live. That's what it is. So this is the prayer. It's on you. I'm not going to lay hands. I'm not going to come over and pr- No, but this is your time to speak to the Lord. Just as Samuel did in the Bible, you see, first and foremost, Lord, I want to hear from you. And Lord, I do need your guidance and direction. I can't do life on my own anymore. I don't know how to do life on my own anymore. Have that conversation with the Lord and then we'll move on to the next part. And as you finish this one conversation, you end it with, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And then I'll take you to the next part. Yeah. 
That's the Lord moving in your heart. For many of you guys that are feeling the Lord right now, or you're feeling like this heat, or you're feeling like an oversense of emotion that's coming over your life, that's the Lord. And he's taking you back. For those of you who are in the room and you're, you're praying the other prayer, Lord, I'm sorry for denying your direction. I'm sorry for denying your guidance. All right? Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. All right? Go ahead and say that. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So this is the second part of your prayer. We now know that the Holy Spirit is given to us as a gift who hears on behalf of the Lord in heaven. And the Holy Spirit is the way that you would be able to be led in life, to hear direction in life. So the prayer is, Holy Spirit, I need you a part of my life. Lead and guide me. Share with me the things that you are receiving. Teach me the things that you know. I need you. I need you. Change my life. I don't want to live the same life. Change my life. Come on. If you don't mean it from your heart, and if you don't see it as a time of truly saying, I surrender to you, Lord, then you're up here saying good words. But if you're up here right now and you're saying what you're saying, it has to mean something to you. You have to know that once you leave this place, you're no longer guiding and leading your own life. That if the Lord speaks to you, you do what he says. If the Lord prompts it in your heart, you do what he says. If the Lord says, give it up, give it up. If the Lord says, give it away, give it away. If the Lord says, speak, you speak. If the Lord says, go pray for someone, you go and pray for someone. This is the call to be his children. If your mom and dad say, take out the trash, you take out the trash. If the Lord says, go minister to that person, they need to experience my love. Go and pray for them. It's on you. Lord, we thank you for this message. We thank you for just the depth in your word for us to see how important it is for us to be able to hear from you. How important it is for us to live a life that's guided by the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the new covenant. We thank you for the new life that we have, that we no longer have to make sacrifices or speak through somebody else. Lord, that you are our high priest and we love you. And we thank you that now we have this relationship and now we have this communication line with you, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak to us every day. Your servants are listening and we want to do what it is that you ask. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know why, but the Lord's putting it in my heart. The Holy Spirit's putting it in my heart. One, there's a lot more people in the room who have heard from the Lord, but you just deny doing what he wants you to do. And two, be prepared as you answer this call that when the Lord speaks, because he's speaking clearly in the last few days, he's been speaking so clearly. There's such an importance of an awakening that is about to happen. Like, people who don't know the Lord will come to know the Lord, and he'll speak through you. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to pray. I don't even know the word that will, Pastor Sam. Guess who does? The Holy Spirit. I don't have the passion to read the Bible, but guess what happens when you're filled with the Holy Spirit? You have passion to read the word. It's not about I I can't. It's not about I don't know how. It's not about... I don't have time. It's about speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Lord, thank you for the message today. Thank you for impacting our lives. Yeah. 
Lord, we thank you so much. If you're at the altar, uh, stay at the altar. I'd love to pray for you right before you leave, but let's pray and dismiss for everybody else. Lord, we thank you for the message today. We ask that you stay and be with us even into the next message. But Lord, have your way in our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.